So hi, I'm Dave Akins um, with Savvy Optics Corp, and uh, I thought I'd record some of the new features with the uh, motorized system. Uh, before I start, though, I want to thank everybody for the great support we've been getting in the Savvy Inspector project. We've uh, shipped more than 30 units now, and uh, it's really uh, making quite an impact in the world. Hopefully, we're doing our part. Um, recently, um, we've released the Savvy Inspector 4M, which is a motorized system with auto mapping features, and we haven't done a video in a while, so. We thought we'd show you how it works. Now, uh, this is the system. It doesn't look a lot different from the Savvy Inspector uh, SIF 4 or 4E that you might be familiar with, um, but you will notice that we've added a joystick, and that's because the, the XYZ stages are motorized. Um, it, the, the function of the system works the same as it did before. Uh, we would go ahead and, and start an inspection. I'll just go through an inspection with you just so you can see how that works. We won't, um, we won't necessarily map all the imperfections on this window, but give you a feeling for how the mapping software works and how the auto scan works. So the first thing you would do is you would load your part. Um, here you can just hit the load button and it's going to move the stage to the center of travel. And then uh, we're going to zoom uh, or uh, change focus by driving the z-axis. You can see that the z-axis moves when I rotate the, the knob. So we just zoom down to uh, or focus down until we get to our window. There's our part and uh, then I'll use the joystick to move the XY stages and uh, we can see, uh, see the piece. Now um, what I'm going to do is show you how to do the mapping which uh, is a new feature we have with the motorized unit. Um, you create a file just like you did before. Um, uh, you give the file a name, I will call this uh, demo window one and it's uh, a part number of some part number and serial number and so forth. Um, but the key thing is you hit the map data button and you now enter the parts, size, and shape. So um, you can make um, ellipses or rectangles. Of course, a, a rectangle with equal lengths on uh, the x and y directions, just a square. Um, so we'll, this is a circle, so we'll select ellipse. And uh, it's about 40 by 40. It's actually 38 by 38. So we enter the part dimensions. We hit OK. And it creates a map of that part, which is a completely separate window. We can move that around. Um, and now when I hit OK to close out the inspection file, it's going to ask me to move to the top of the part. So I'll go ahead and just move the cursor until the top dead center is inside my measurement window. And then I hit OK, and it zeroes home. So now it knows that I'm there. On this map, you can see that big red cross. That's top dead center. And the little white cross, that's where I'm currently looking. So as I drive around, you'll notice that the white cross moves around and we can see all sorts of different things. So, um, so to use the mapping software, what we would do is we would go ahead and find something we wanted to map. This scratch looks really attractive, so we're going to go ahead and give it a map. Um, the way this works is you go find one end of the scratch, just like we do usually. Click on one end of the scratch to start the scratch measurement and um, then uh, select an indicator to mark that point, and then we translate to the other end of the scratch. And once we get the indicator to the other end of the scratch, we hit the end scratch button. Okay, so we know that scratch is 16.79 millimeters long. Now we want to go find the brightest point on the scratch because we want to record this scratch at its brightest point. That's the, uh, the standard definition of a scratch. So we'll go find the brightest point. Looks like it's about that might be about here, right about there. Okay, so it's a number 60, so we'll enter the uh, data here. Scratch number 60, and uh, you can enter any data you want, of course. And once I've got the image where I want it, I hit Save Data, and now it's going to ask me what kind of an imperfection this is. I'll select a scratch, we'll call this Scratch S1, and we give it a color. And we hit OK, and it puts the scratch on our map. So you can see this just gone ahead and added that scratch feature onto the map. Um, we can do the same thing for digs. Uh, let's just go find a good candidate. Here's a nice dig. Uh, same thing, we just go ahead and put that into our measurement window, enter whatever data here we want. Um, so that's a number 14 dig. We'll go ahead and save that, and uh, it's, we'll call it dig D1. Hit OK, 
and it adds that to the map as well. And then we'll keep doing that as long as we keep selecting um, more data. There's another feature that's kind of cool for really big parts, because sometimes the part's so large, you really just don't want to stand there and scan the entire length of a perfectly pristine part. So we added this auto scan feature. So you hit this auto scan button, and it's going to go map out the entire surface. It's moving across the part, and it's moving in 8 by 10 millimeter increments, because the field of view is 9 by 11, and it's grabbing images at every location on the part. And uh, this doesn't take very long. It's, uh, for a, a one-inch part, it usually takes about a minute, um, maybe half a minute, depending on how fast you've set the stages to run. Um, and once that's done, we can go ahead and uh, close that file out, or we can just go look at it. Here, let's, uh, let's just open it up and see what's inside. So here's demo window one. Here's the auto-scan file. These are the images that we took earlier, so it's been saving them into that file folder called... Uh, demo window one, and it saves the uh, the bitmap as well as the screenshot of each of the imperfections we measured. It saves a, a digital copy of the map that we made, and then it has this new auto scan folder. And tucked inside is an image of every square millimeter of that part. And each of the images are indexed by their location on the part with respect to top dead center. So now you've got a way to document what the part looked like very quickly and very easily before shipment. Uh, and have that in the same file with your scratch and dig inspection information. So that just goes in a folder for that particular job, and, uh, and you can call it up at a later date if there's ever any conflict. So that's the way that auto scan feature works. It's pretty handy. And you can um, actually see some of these images. You can, you can do a review mode kind of thing where you go find a feature that's interesting in auto scan, look at the coordinates. So this is at minus 9, 8. So let's just go to that location. So we enter the coordinates here, minus 9, 8, and hit go to, and it'll take us to that imperfection, and there it is. So it's a nice easy way to find your way around the part. You have a big part, you make a large map, you can then go back and review it later and see what you've got. So we can go ahead and close the file, and now we're ready for another inspection. It's a pretty handy system. I really like the motorized unit. Um, I know some of you will remember that I resisted getting a motorized system just because I, I didn't feel it was necessary, and I think it's important that we have uh, an affordable entry-level system, but I have to admit, I've switched over to the motorized unit. It's, um, it's way more easy to use, it's much faster to do inspections, and so this is my preferred system now. So anyway, there it is. Um, enjoy it, um, and uh, tell your friends. And thank you for all your support, as always. Dave Akins, signing off.